Terraria's 1.4.4 update has certainly redefined the weapon meta due to a number of reworks made to a handful of weapons, whether that be to popular options like the Terra Blade or more obscure weapons like the Dark Lance. Today, we're going to be looking at a ranged subclass which has seen a complete overhaul in terms of the way they deal damage and visually look. Of course, I'm talking about the Flamethrower and the Elf Melter. Previously, both of these weapons functioned almost identically, but now with a new look of paint, I have to say they look far more exciting than they did before. And it's not just the looks that have been improved, the way they deal damage to enemies has also been changed, giving them potential to be a far more viable option at the stages of the game you can obtain them. Before we look at their performance, however, here's how you can get your hands on them. Starting with the Flamethrower, you'll require 20 Souls of Fright, which will of course mean you'll have to take out Skeletron Prime. Luckily, with a weapon like the Onyx Blaster, this fight isn't that difficult as long as you keep your distance. With the Souls obtained, you'll next need to purchase some illegal gun parts which are sold by your arms dealer at night. Finally, you'll need to combine these with 20 iron at an anvil and craft yourself that flamethrower. Moving on, the Elf Melter is a little more complicated, being a post Pontera weapon. You'll need to summon the Frost Moon using a naughty present, which is crafted with 20 silk made from cobwebs, 5 ectoplasm from Dungeon Spirit, and 5 souls of fright from Skeletron Prime. Now, actually getting this thing to drop can be quite painful, as the Frost Moon event isn't exactly a walk in the park. We need to be on the lookout for sand tanks, which start with a low 4.55% chance of dropping the Elf Melter. But like other moon event drops, this scales up as you move through the rounds. I found that using a weapon like the Nail Gun is your best bet, as it deals high damage and means you can keep your distance. In my case, it wasn't until the event ended I could go check my drops, and just like that, there was two on the floor. Okay, now that you've got your hands on the flamethrowers, let's take a look at their performance. Starting with the mid-mech version, the standard flamethrower. When fired, a large stream of fire will release, consuming gel as ammunition. Previously, this would pierce up to three enemies and deal damage over time. However, now it can pierce up to four enemies and uses local immunity frames on its projectiles, meaning it can deal damage to individual enemies faster. On top of this, it now also ignores up to 15 points of enemy defense before losing damage and inflicts the Hellfire debuff instead of the weaker on fire. All these changes combined make for some pretty sweet DPS pre Pantera. The Elf Melter has seen similar changes, but with a few subtle nerfs too. The base damage has been decreased from 60 to 53, and it now fires 5 best of flames per shot instead of 6. Although this is a shame, the fact the other changes still result in a higher DPS shows you just how impactful these changes are. Like the flamethrower, it now pierces up to 4 enemies and ignores 15 points of defense, plus it similarly uses local immunity frames on its projectiles, increasing potential DPS. Also, to tie in with its new awesome blue visual, it inflicts the frostbite debuff instead of on fire. In practice, I found these weapons to be incredibly effective at crowd control. Even the weaker flamethrower has absolutely no problem literally stun-locking fast-moving targets in place due to the rate it deals damage. The Elf Melter is even better, dealing more damage and having slightly more range on its flame. Just look at these giant tortoises hover. Now moving on to bosses, depending on the order you progress in early hard mode, the flamethrower can absolutely rip green slime to shreds. Like, this almost feels like a pre-hard mode boss it takes her out so quickly. So, if you're someone who finds taking out Skeletron Prime easier than Queen Slime, you've got the perfect weapon to use. Additionally, the Flamethrower is a fantastic option against the Destroyer due to its high amount of piercing, and while this isn't quite Drippler Crippler or Deadless Stormbow speeds, it does the job nonetheless. As for the Elf Melter, I found that this weapon is highly effective against Duke Fishrod due to its precise accuracy. The flame reacts to the curse's movement rapidly. The only downside is from what I can see, the flame is cut off when going underwater, which I mean is completely expected. Oh and yeah, I did die, but that's because I suck at Duke's final stage, not because the weapon's bad. I have to say that I'm impressed with what Relogic have done to these weapons which were previously very forgotten. I for one would never go out my way to craft a flamethrower and would always trash the elf melter. But now honestly, you should give them a try, as they can both be solid ranged options for their tier. What do you think? Are the flamethrowers worth it now or still underwhelming? Thanks for watching. For more Terraria content like this, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.